So we have a team of Leave partner that, yeah. energy engineers that will work with the organisation. Um, we're actually sitting on a number of frameworks right across the UK, so we we understand the sort of issues around um, where energy waste occurs and inefficient boilers, inefficient heating systems, things like that. So just in terms of credibility, um, then we're we're conducting energy audits, and again we're, we're kind of finding that it's more simple things like rather than putting in or installing new systems that maybe up front um, demand a lot of capital expenditure, that actually they're very a series of quick fixes in terms of submetering. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight three case studies quickly um, on each of these kind of areas. And as I mentioned, we actually do the project management, so the installation, we also help with grants, with loans, um, helping clients to complete those application forms. And one in particular that I would like to highlight is the Exceed program, which the SEAI have launched. Um, I'm just going to make a point that there's a deadline for August this year, so there's up to 250,000 euro available for organizations through whether it's um, maybe a, a capital expenditure, a new boiler, or an implementation of a campaign or readjusting or commissioning of, of systems and it can also be applied to the process. So it could be something to do with the building but actually manufacturing process and things like that. So there, there's money available there. We're familiar with the application forms. I have a sample application form here and um, so it, it's, it's open to, we'll talk again about it later on, but it's open to all organisations in the Republic of Ireland. Um, one, um, one of our projects as well that, that we do, this is what we offer, is free reporting for the first year. And really what, what, why we do this is because we, we want to interface, we want to give people back that information and that knowledge to actually do something with it. So as we're project managing, we're providing the reports, we're able to see maybe um, peaks and troughs in, in energy inefficiencies and then we're being responsive to tweak those and then we hand that over then to the client after a year to say, okay, you now then know how the system works, you can read the graphs and then it gives them a bit more empowerment. A bit like Rosemary said about that knowledge, environmental knowledge, then you become more informed and you're more engaged. So that's something we do there. Um, some of our other services, I mean, as I mentioned, it's mostly around your sub-metering, energy monitoring, targeting. It's a big kind of hot topic right across the EU. And energy, kind of these, but the BEM systems, you've got these very complex systems like 963 readers that are that are working behind the scenes and computers and, and holistically making sure the building is working like an organism and heat sensors and taking readings every three seconds of CO2 levels and temperature and really do we understand what that's actually telling us in real life data. So we have a number of um, kind of more easy to read kind of apps for your iPhone, for your computer systems that, that translate that into I guess, comprehensive information that lead to better decision making. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to touch on boiler optimization, air conditioning, um, intelligent um, lighting. So we just think about all the, the energy demands that a company has, it's mostly around heat, um, your energy for your cooling. A lot of all organizations now have computers and server rooms, so that's a huge demand for energy. And then also lighting and your kind of active features there. So what we first of all do then is we, we make the plans and we uh, get, identify where their base loads are and then we would just, it's very simple, just a sample table that I put up here of various recommendations that they could be implemented, implementing sorry, in the organisation and with each of these then we get a more, there's a more detailed report on each of these. So it's up to the client to choose whichever one they want to go to, if they want to go to any at all and then we will work with them through that implementation phase. And again, it's simple things like your CO2. So in terms of your carbon reduction commitment reporting, this helps them, but also you've got your savings in kilowatt hours. So we're finding this is working well when they're negotiating energy contracts because they're understanding, well, this is my energy need, this is my energy demand. I'm gonna actually then put out, um, you know, they can, they can put out to other tariffs of energy providers and dictate maybe pricing and also your years of payback. So they can quickly look at this and think, well actually, there we go, we've got the BEMS integration, it's going to give me less than a year payback. So they may decide to do that as a quick one. So the first case study, it was a large uh, golf resort um, in Ireland. 
and I can't name it, um, so we'll have to keep that confidential. Um, so with the first energy audit, again, the baseline data of electrical um, kerosene, and we found that the lodges were using significant number of gas, and when you kind of look at the, the, the high levels, they're pretty consistently high. Um, and then so we were looking at then the, a list of recommendations and the one that they wanted to go for here that I'm just going to highlight as a case study was the sub-metering and how this actually saved them money. So because it was, it was a large complex, it was actually in three phases. So we're actually in the second part of, of phase two um, and then it'll go on to the, the, the Gulf Pub itself. Um, so what we're doing is then we're installing these kind of fiscal meter reading devices and this is one particular one that we're using. And again, just as I said, it, it just translates what's happening in the building into readable kind of graphs and things. So we, we've been involved in it, we're actually over 10 years old, we're one of the large, I suppose, long-standing energy consultants in Ireland. So we understand that um, the complex complexities behind actually people need stuff like this on the back of just having an energy audit and data. So we're working with uh, what we believe are these really good devices that we're of choice um, and working with our clients. So this is one at the moment, Emate, the eco driver. So reliable data capture and obviously helps in monitoring and targeting and then you're able to manage change. So very simple, you know, whether it's the director of the company or whether it's the energy manager or whether it's the maintenance manager, you all have that input and you can start then setting those targets and actually using those buildings as per designed. And that's during that implementation phase. So what are they what are they seeing? Well, they've got payback of less than actually what we envisaged. Um, and I can't talk about it actually how much they're in terms of financial savings, um, but certainly a 15% profit of bottom line on, on year two, um, a 15% savings in that. This is a large uh, bank headquarters actually, I think we've, we've a published case study here of another one, the Danske Bank, um, if anyone wants to look at that, and using again then the same system of um, the e if anyone wants to or I'll pass it around there, and some of our systems. And again this was around heat efficiency, so different to that case study there. And again just the sort of usual, usual issues around heating, um, boiler optimization, control issues, so we're thinking that's the human factor there, behaviours. Um, a lot of BEM systems actually not calibrated correctly, providing false information. And then this is obviously leading them to, to boilers, trying to compete against themselves, and, and, and if, they're, if they're not correctly calibrated. So, just, so this was a, a device that we installed, the heat gem. You may not have heard of this, so what is heat gem? So this is a device that, that you basically sits on the boiler itself. And really I'll just point to this graph. So your normal mode of your idle time, I mean 13 hours of the day, it's, it's sitting idle. Sorry, it's idle only 10, time, 10 hours of the day, but run time 13 on your normal mode. But actually when you put on the heat gem, you've got nine hours of run time compared to 13 hours, and you think that it's significantly. So just something simple like that. And what it does is it, it sits on the boiler and it kind of speaks to it and speaks to other controls and then it will it will modify. And I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, an IT analyst here um, speaking, but this is, this is what it does. Um, there's, there's obviously more information. In fact, that's the one on Heat Gem and some of the examples where we've used it on housing developments hotels and city councils as well. So a lot of buildings perhaps with really old boilers. And that's what it looks like sitting on the, the boiler. And um, the benefits up to 30% savings and typically the payback is year one. So we're not talking about maybe the PVs, the turbines, with maybe a long-term payback. We're finding the clients just want something immediate. They want the energy prices that are rising today. We want that return on the investment this year, next year. Um, this is the, I guess, through the savings. I'll, I'll move on in terms of time here. But with the, with this particular client, we help with a, a grant up to 20% through Energia and 22% of cost savings. 
some of the issues that we find that the, the heat gem actually find as well. So it is a diagnostic tool, but it also manages the energy and manages that change. Um, a city centre office development, um, and we're working with a number of, of this is actually an IT, um, large IT company, so a lot of servers, a lot of energy demand. Um, and we use the, the EMIT Eco Driver, and it's kind of what you're doing, again, back to that analogy of what you're doing with that information. So this was actually, I've, I've just put it up because it's only a recent one in June, but already in two weeks of it being installed, um, they've got you know, the water savings, we've got we've flagged up issues, excess water consumption, excess consumption of electricity, and you can look at the sort of the cost savings that are projected, and that's within two weeks. So that helps that decision making then further up the chain. So um, we're out here, we're willing to meet the organizations, we need to discuss and assess their energy needs, identify these quick wins, the payback, and then project manage to help them report on energy and save. And again, in terms of the saving, companies are eligible for ROC, CRC, so the EU trading scheme on carbon. Um, and I'm just going to touch briefly, as I mentioned, on the Exceed program. So it's launched in April this year for all organisations in Republic of Ireland. Um, commercial buildings, this applies to um, retrofit, new build, um, and also systems optimisation. Um, it actually takes you through an accreditation as well, and the accreditation takes you through is, is the equivalent of the ISO 50,000 a month. So when you think of in uh, the Republic of Ireland, where you're, it's going to be mandatory to report on your energy, this this standard will cover that. So it's it's, it's government backed to help organisations in a kind of more cost effective way. So as I mentioned, there's 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 two stages of funding, but you have to go through the first stage to get the second phase of funding. So we're working with organisations on that at the moment. And it has to be submitted by the client, so that's why we're, we're kind of doing the whole process. And the funding actually covers all of the assessment, all the meeting up, all the, the whole energy campaign, so it doesn't just cover capital expenditure. So we're happy to do that. It's a it's a pilot project, the Succeed project, so it will be here to stay. Energy efficiency, carbon reduction, sustainable ways of working. It's not going away. And these are some of the clients that we're working with um, across Ireland and the UK and hope to continue to work with.